Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fifth of the expert talks of the fourth Butterfly Festival. Thank you for joining us. And before we start today's proceedings, I would request all the audience members to please mute yourselves and switch off your videos to help better streaming. And please do not use the annotations. And if you have any questions, please use the chat feature to post them. As you all know, today's talk is the fourth of five talks being organized as part of the Karnataka Butterfly Festival. On the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th of November, we had four very well attended talks about early stages and host plants of butterflies by Hanish KM, butterfly biology for the general public by Nitin Ravikantachari, beauties of Lalit Mahal Palace, Mysore and Kodagu by Arun Ars, and the fascinating world of butterfly behavior by Harsha Kumar respectively. The recorded versions of the first two talks are available on the Bengaluru Butterfly Club's YouTube channel. The other talks too would soon be available on the same channel. Today's topic is My Journey with Butterflies by Samilin Eshati. I have the privilege now to introduce to you today's speaker, a very well-known conservationist and founder of the Butterfly Park Belvai, Samilin Shetty. Samilin was born in Belvai village near Mudubidri of Dakshina Kannada district. Being born and brought up in the village, the natural instinct to conserve wildlife and nature influenced him a lot in his life. His special interest for butterflies grew when he was allotted a pro project on the study of local butterflies by his zoology teacher, Professor Ashok CH, during his graduation days at Alvas College, Mudabidri. Since then, he has been keenly observing these wing beauties and he has dedicated himself to conserve them. He even founded the Butterfly Park in Belvai in the year 2011 with the aim of conserving the butterfly fauna of the Western Guards. The park creates awareness among general public and students, making them understand the importance of butterflies in nature. The park also encourages and motivates people to create and conserve the natural habitat for butterflies and other wildlife forms. Samilan's 100 minute documentary film, Life of Butterflies, that was released last season, reveals the interesting facts about butterflies and their life history. The footages for the documentary were shot exclusively at the butterfly park by him over a span of four years. It's the country's first ever comprehensive documentary on butterflies and is appreciated by butterfly experts across the nation. He was also featured in Amazing Indians season three by Times Now as an exceptional eco savior in 2013 for his work on butterfly conservation. The Butterfly Park at Belvoir was also honored by World Book of Records London UK in uh, 2018 for hosting awareness programs and conservation activities. He was awarded the Popular Choice Award in 2020 by Deccan Herald at the Deccan Herald Changemakers 2020 event. So it is our great privilege to have him here today to share with us his journey with butterflies. And I'm also sure that the rest of you are eagerly waiting as I am to hear about it from Samilan himself. So I'd like to, like to now hand over the proceedings to Samilan. And thank you Samilan for taking the time from your busy schedule to be here and to share your life and experiences with us as part of the fourth Karnataka Butterfly Festival proceedings. Over to you Samilan. Uh, thank you. For this introduction and uh, also for the opportunity uh, for the entire team of the Karnataka Butterfly Festival 2020. I also thank uh, uh, Forest Department of Karnataka for organizing uh, such a you know thing where uh, make it where uh, which can make butterflies more popular also. Uh, so today I'll be uh, uh, just uh, moving on with the slides and some of the videos uh, what are exclusively taken from the butterfly park here. Uh, and after that, uh, we will have a uh, question and session. Uh, now, uh, in the uh, screen, you're seeing the photo of the uh, one, uh, uh, an iconic butterfly of the Western Guards, the Malabar banded peacock. Uh, this is the butterfly uh, which, uh, you know, fascinated me a lot uh, when I started my career with butterflies. Uh, we had a wild patch of uh, Clerodendra miscosa in Pulu, we call it as Ito. Uh, that was a patch which used to attract a lot of uh, Malabar banded peacocks and other butterflies. And uh, I used to shoot uh, with my uh, digital camera that was uh, in 2008, 2009, like that. Okay, So let us 
start this presentation. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, so this butterfly park in Belvoir is just a natural habitat for butterflies. So uh, uh, you have about four acres of secondary forest, which is untouched. Uh, majority of the trees, what you are seeing is uh, Hopia ponga. Uh, and these trees serve as host plant for up to about eight species of butterflies. Uh, the remaining land was a, is a, was a paddy field earlier, which was slowly converted into a butterfly habitat, the remaining out of the 7.35 acres dedicated land. So I developed this interest uh, uh, with butterflies during my BSc at Alvas College in Motobidri after I was allotted a, pro a project on study of local uh, butterflies by my zoology teacher, Sri Ashok CH. So that inspired uh, me actually to follow butterflies, though I was interested in uh, wildlife right from my childhood days. Uh, this was my first photograph of the Malabar banded peacock. Uh, this was shot in the year 2009. Uh, 2009. And I was just mentioning about that uh, Clerodendron viscosum patch, the flowering patch, uh, which were, used to attract a lot of butterflies naturally. And uh, this was the first photo I shot of the Malabar banded peacock. Uh, this butterfly uh, gives two different colors depending on the angle what you see or depending on the time of the day and which also fascinated me the most. The book uh, that inspired to start this conservation work um, that was in the year 2011. Uh, I came across, across this book in the year 2010 and uh, uh, this butterfly, uh, this book actually, you know, inspired me to start the conservation uh, work uh, where we started propagating more native plants in the uh, native nectar plants. So naturally the butterfly population would sustain. So we start collected, uh, collecting the seeds of the host and nectar plants, you know, for the butterflies to uh, thrive in an area. One thing is that they require uh, host plants uh, for them to lay the eggs and for the caterpillars to feed upon because the caterpillars are host plant specific. And the second thing is that uh, the flowering plant which supports them during the adult stage. So, so as we all know, there are four stages in the life cycle of the butterfly. So when you have, when you concentrate on these host and nectar plants, you'll see automatically the butterfly population sustaining in the area. Uh, this is the aerial view of the butterfly habitat, what is being reserved now, uh, the 7.35 acres. Uh, here you can see uh, the secondary forest and majority of the trees in the secondary forest is Popia ponga, which serves as host for up to eight species of butterflies. Uh, though uh, you have Popia uh, ponga, there are a lot of other uh, different trees native to the area, which serve as host for many butterfly species. So uh, then you have that, uh, that paddy field, which was, uh, which was slowly converted into a butterfly habitat. It was my mom who actually donated this land for the conservation of butterflies and purpose of creating awareness among the general public and students. And uh, she was also uh, interested in butterflies. Uh, we used to, you know, cut jackfruit and keep aside, uh, not actually knowing that butterflies would come on that. And the butterflies used to come and sit and, you know, sip uh, the rotten liquid from the jackfruit. And you can also see uh, some of the remarkable species like Red Spot Duke and Cruiser in the photo and also the clipper butterfly on the jackfruit. So we created a sample habitat uh, in the year 2011 uh, where we put some host and nectar plants and uh, my mom and my brother supported me in this unique effort. There was also great support from my friends, butterfly enthusiasts across the nation. Uh, media also played a very important role in promoting our work uh, on conservation. Uh, those days I was so much fascinated by works of uh, Dr. Saji Kandor and uh, well, Balakrishnan Vallapil, um, Hani sir also gives a wonderful support. And, and uh, I, I cannot forget Ashok sir, Dr. Milin Bakre, uh, Makran Kulkarni, Isaac sir. Uh, so the long list goes like that. So there's a good support coming out uh, from, you know, throughout across the country uh, for this work of ours, which actually boosted uh, our energy. So these are the first visitors uh, at the butterfly habitat in the year 2011. Uh, one by name, Arsh, uh, Ishad Akbar and uh, his brother, uh, Adil Akbar. And there are other visitors also, which I'm not showing in the photo here, Rakesh Panache, 
Prashant Pujari. So they are the people who first visited the butterfly habitat in the year 2011, the, also before the butterfly park was actually inaugurated. Uh, I had visited a few butterfly parks uh, uh, before I started in, uh, the butterfly park in Belvoir. Uh, one which uh, also inspired me was the butterfly, Oelekarwadi butterfly garden in Thane. Uh, and uh, Mr. Rajendra Oelekar was the founder of uh, that a butterfly park in Thane, and his was an open conservation park, which I was more fascinated to. Of course, uh, uh, Isaac Kemker, who is popularly known as the butterfly man of India, was the most inspiring personality, and he was the one inaugurated the butterfly park in 2013. So in 2012, uh, we had Rajendra Oelekar visiting the butterfly park, uh, and this was a wonderful meeting with the uh, Hanish sir, in Bangalore, uh, I really feel nostalgic uh, looking at these photos. Okay, uh, of uh, we are talking with Hanish sir. So Rajendra uh, sir had come all the way from uh, Mumbai to Butterfly Park, Bilwai, and then we went to Bangalore to meet Hanish sir there. And after that, he had left to Mumbai back. So that was a uh, that was a moment which I just cannot forget in my life. Okay, uh, there are many people who inspired me to start this work, and these are the few people. And here also you can see uh, Ashok sir and uh, Dr. Milin Bakre, uh, who had uh, visited uh, from faraway places. And uh, uh, it was uh, those, uh, those, those are the initial days when we started the Butterfly Park uh, in 2011. Uh, visit of uh, Dr. Krishna May Kunte in 2013 in January was also uh, gives a lot of uh, you know boost to the work and. Uh, uh, that is a wonderful moment again. So in 2013, uh, this was this photo was taken during the summer season, and in 2013. So of course, uh, it all comes to life uh, when pre monsoon showers fall and uh, the southwest monsoon begins, uh, mostly in the month of June, which uh, triggers the butterfly activity here. So in the year 2013, in on August 18, the butterfly park was uh, inaugurated by. Uh, Isaac Kemker. Uh, you can see Isaac sir shooting butterflies uh, in the butterfly park. This photo. So uh, let me just tell you a few facts uh, about the butterfly park. The butterfly park that started in 2011 is situated at Belvai village, Dakshina Kannada district, Karnataka, was officially inaugurated in 2013. So the total of, uh, land of 7.35 acres was dedicated to this butterfly habitat. It's a natural habitat for butterflies and other wildlife forms, uh, forms and no dome or enclosure is maintained. So propagation of more native uh, plants related to butterflies is still in progress. We work to inspire the general public mostly and the students to conserve the native flora. Uh, so more than 150 species of butterflies have been recorded uh, until date. I also cannot uh, forget the support which has been given by the Karnataka Forest Department providing us a local native uh, species of plants. Uh, uh, to put in the butterfly habitat where we have the paddy fields still remaining. Uh, so we are also featured in Times Now uh, for our this work of creating awareness among the general public and uh, for the work of conservation, what we've been doing uh, as in the Amazing Indian Season 3 program. Uh, this, was one, this was when uh, uh, Kartik sir visited us. Uh, he's, one of the, uh, he's the chief naturalist for uh, JLR. And it was a, also a wonderful moment. We presented him with a photo of Malabar bandit peacock. Uh, this was when Sanjay sir uh, visited uh, the butterfly park. Uh, this was in 2016. Of course, we got a very good support from the department uh, uh, after that. Uh, we, we've been uh, really supported by the department for our work of this conservation. Uh, so you can see the students. So we uh, actually create awareness program for students so where they are given a, a brief introduction about butterflies and uh, also a little theory about butterflies, uh, some video presentation and a guided field tour. We make batches and take them in the field and uh, you know, create awareness among these uh, young minds so that they also inspire to love and protect nature. So our main objective is to, you know, make people uh, 
uh, fall in love with nature, uh, make them understand more about butterflies. You know, conservation is not a one man's job. So it's all when everything get together, so it's possible. So you can, you have to involve the general public uh, in the work of conservation, which is very much important so that they also conserve the uh, natural habitats in their locations. So this is my brother in the field who has been uh, supporting uh, financially for a lot of our works at the butterfly park. So here I'm going to show you some of the photos from the butterfly park. Uh, so here's the autumn leaf butterfly. You have the courtship of the common mormon. The mating striped tiger. Uh, in this photo, you're seeing the Malabar banded solotail. So the Malabar banded solotail, uh, you can see uh, it laying X on uh, Citrus medica. So this is a, a first ever reported host for this particular butterfly. Uh, it's normally known to breed on Acramtria pedunculata and uh, Melicupe lunoncenda. So this is the first ever reported host for this butterfly, the Citrus medica or Citron. Uh, which was recorded from the butterfly park. Uh, let me just highlight uh, on the life cycle. Uh, I know that uh, you know the previous speakers have were very much in detail sp spoken about the life cycle of the butterfly, but maybe uh, gen any general public who has joined for the first time uh, this talk, uh, let me just tell you there are four stages in the butterfly life cycle. Here you are seeing the egg of the southern bird wing. Uh, these are the caterpillars having their first meal. These are the caterpillars of the autumn leaf butterfly. Uh, which breed on uh, a plant called Sudoranthama malabaricum. In Canada, we call it as Nagamalige. So that's uh, only one reported host for this butterfly in this part of the Western Ghats. Um, here you're seeing the southern bird in caterpillar, which has just come out and uh, eating its own eggshell, which is the first foot of the caterpillar. Uh, you can see the caterpillar after feeding, it uh, uses the silk thread at the anterior end, the posterior end, there's a silk pad for the support. Next, what happens is the skin ruptures and comes out and the butterfly uh, pu a caterpillar becomes a pupa. So it's an amazing, amazing transformation you'll see later where the butterfly would close out normally within a month in case of southern birding. But in some time, uh, sometimes if the conditions are not favorable, it might remain dormant uh, for up to about, um, up to about three to four months also. So this butterfly is uh, just walking out. No, no. It closing out the pupa, the southern bird wing. And it has completely come out of the pupa, as you can see. It would take the first flight of its life within about two to three hours of coming out of the chrysalis. This is the meconium fluid which the butterfly exits uh, before taking its first flight. Uh, here's a flight shot of the southern bird wing, the male and female. You can see the orange or lit uh, butterfly here on Stachyrid by Jamaica and cheese. So this is one of the best uh, nectar plants for the butterflies. There are many species of Stachyrid preta. There is Stachyrid preta Jamaica and cheese. There is Stachyrid preta Metabolis, uh, uh, Stachyrid preta Indica, which attracts a lot of butterflies uh, naturally. Uh, so here are some more photos from the butterfly uh, park. Uh, this is the more series on uh, Lea Indica. So is my uh, Priya, uh, is my screen moving slower? Uh, no, I said. Okay, okay. So this is the more stage actually on Lea Indica. Uh, Lea Indica is a wonderful nectar plant, uh, which is naturally found in the Western Ghats. Uh, this is the banded blue Piero butterfly, the banded royal, uh, which was recorded from the butterfly park. So these are some of the photographs from the butterfly park. So when you create such a habitat, so these are the butterflies which 
uh, which can visit uh, your habitats and also thrive in uh, such an ecosystem. We also recorded a couple of times the blue nabob at the butterfly park. Uh, so the, of course, the last sighting was in the year 2015. After that, we haven't sighted the blue nava. Uh, here's a butterfly called red spot duke. Uh, this butterfly uh, is known to breed on cashew nut too. Uh, the cashew nut is a very common uh, common tree, but you don't see a red spot duke as a common butterfly. But you see common baron, which breeds on uh, uh, the same cashew as a very common butterfly. Here's a red spot duke female. It's a gaudy baron. The autumn leaf. Clipper. This breeds on Amritabali, the commander breeds on Musenda. So these are the common butterflies, what you see, uh, Southern Duffer. Uh, so what is the importance of butterflies in nature? Uh, first and foremost thing is that they act as bioindicators. Uh, they indicate how rich is our ecological system. This is because the butterflies are host plant specific. Every butterfly has got its own host plant. So by looking at the butterfly, and actually, you can actually tell the floral diversity of the area. Second, is, second thing is that they help in pollination. The third is that they form a part of the foot web. Uh, as you can see in the photo here, there's a crab spider, which has caught a common Jezebel butterfly. There's one more crab spider, which has caught the great egg fly. So they form an important part of the foot web. So here's a jane sp uh, spider, which has caught the red Helen butterfly. Uh, this one, you're seeing the caterpillar of the, uh, caterpillar of the southern bird wing. Uh, the state butterfly of Karnataka, which has been infected by the parasitic uh, wasp. Uh, these are the cocoons of the parasitic wasp. Uh, these parasitic wasps uh, play a very important role in controlling the birding population uh, because southern birdings being toxic butterflies uh, normally don't have uh, birds as predators. Uh, birds tend to avoid such butterflies. Uh, so here you can see the spider feeding on the eggs of the tawny cluster. So this is something which is interesting which was recorded long back, uh, which is not actually reported earlier. Uh, so the spider feeding on something which is immobile. Uh, let me just tell a few things about the documentary, what we uh, worked on. Uh, the Life of Butterflies is India's first ever documentary on butterflies, a comprehensive documentary on butterflies, which will actually uh, you know, educate the viewer. And uh, we, are, we show that it would change one's way of looking at butterflies. And we, I worked for almost like five years to complete this documentary, five to six years. Uh, just a few things about the documentary. Uh, it's a hundred minutes documentary it begins with a habitat shots and a brief introduction to the world of insects and butterflies in specific. Uh, it later takes you on an astonishing journey of butterflies and some fantastic footages exclusively captured at the butterfly park in Belvai. So the documentary shows the entire life cycle of the Southern bird wing, which is a state butterfly of Karnataka and it is, which is endemic to South India right from the male choosing and patrolling his territory. You know, the southern birding males are highly uh, territorial butterflies. Uh, they choose territory which is rich in host and nectar plants. And uh, say, for example, like in a 100 meter radius, and they don't allow, uh, leave that place. And you can see these males, uh, see, see this particular male repeatedly in an area. And he's normally very particular about the other males entering his territory. And you can see him actually chasing other butterflies which come to his ter territory. But the females are usually wanderers. They don't stay in a place. They keep on moving uh, from place to place in search of the host. Uh, it then explains and showcases the feeding behavior of the butterflies, including nectaring, mud curling, and others. Uh, it also entails you with the life history of some of the remarkable butterflies of the Western Guards, including the iconic Malabar banded peacock and the Elysio autumn leaf also. Uh, the film concludes with showcasing various defenses and survival techniques, including the symbiotic relationship ants and the Lycinidae family of butterflies, one of the most interesting phenomena about butterflies known to the scientific community. So it was released uh, in the year 2019, and that was last year, uh, on 20th of September, by Isaac Kemke at Alvaro's College, Mudibidri. So. Uh, Actually, to start this uh, work on butterfly documentary, uh, it was one of the visitors who actually inspired me uh, while I, uh, whom I watched shooting butterflies in the park. Uh, and I also loved watching uh, documentaries uh, narrated by David Attenborough, like any other nature lover would do. Uh, it was in 2014, uh, we, I started shooting uh, for this documentary. 
So these are the cameras what I used, uh, the, the basic model cameras, the Sony RX10 Mark II and uh, the Canon 80D with the 100 mm macro lens. I also use Canon 70D with the 100 mm macro lens uh, for you know coming up with uh, the film Life of Butterflies. So let me just uh, play just a small clip for you from the Life of Butterflies. The Earth is a beautiful planet, supporting great forms of life. In the Earth's biosphere, we can find various types of habitats, which have developed in the course of millions of years of natural evolution. Among these are forests, which cover about 30% of the Earth's land surface and are a treasure house of an amazing variety of life. They provide a habitat for a vast array of plants and animals. Their dense tree cover provides shelter and nutrition for various species of animals and birds, big and small, besides harboring insect life by the millions. So let us move on to the next video. Uh, so the, we, uh, we start with the habitat shot and after that, uh, we show we come to the butterflies okay let me just play this video for you also the most beautiful of them all are the butterflies since time immemorial butterflies have been celebrated for their gorgeous colors and graceful flight Humanity's fascination for these winged marvels of nature has continued down the ages. They are in fact the gems of evolution and have served our planet for over 200 million years sharing food with the early dinosaurs. They are nature's die-hard survivors who have learned to adapt and outlive most other forms of life on Earth by a wide margin of millions of years. Today, butterflies signify freedom and beauty in popular folklore. Their diversity helps to indicate the health of an ecosystem. Being an integral part of the food web, they help in maintaining balance in the ecosystem. As they are important pollinators, they are ecologically beneficial too. Their strange life pattern baffles even the wisest scientists, while nature lovers owe their gratitude for the priceless role played by these winged beauties in perpetuating life on Earth. These little wonderful creatures have to navigate their path of survival through ingenious, naturally evolved strategies. So, uh, so we have just uh, uh, stopped, finished that uh, small clip. Um, I hope you enjoyed that clip. Uh, that was just, uh, uh, just from the movie Life of Butterfly. So uh, this is the aerial uh, view of the habitat, what we have, the natural habitat, which has been untouched for more than 40 years now. This was doing the aerial shoot of the, um, you know, of, uh, of the two frames what we used for the documentary. So, so I'm, I just want to share, you, share with you some of the interesting scenes that I enjoyed during the shoot, uh, the butterfly park, the, the rain shots uh, was a wonderful moment for me. I really enjoyed clicking the rain shots. Uh, I clicked the rain shots with the umbrella in my hand on, you know, and keeping a tripod. So that was uh, really a wonderful moment for me. And uh, we got to see a southern bird wing uh, when it was raining. So this uh, moment I remember, uh, we're actually for a TV program uh, from the, uh, the, some people were shooting for a TV program at the butterfly park and uh, the southern bird wing was there flying, the female, and suddenly it started pouring and the butterfly went and sat over there and we could get some nice shots of that. So uh, here uh, you're seeing the southern birdwing male, a territorial male, as I mentioned, 
uh, the males uh, don't live an area. They choose territories which are rich in host and nectar plants, and they are uh, just bound to, you know, protect their territory from other males. And you'll normally see combats, the fi two males fighting with one another. So this is a female's entry in the territory from the screenshot from the documentary, uh, which uh, which is followed by courtship. And uh, one of the interesting uh, behavior what we recorded. Uh, at the butterfly park, which has also been uh, showcased in the documentary, is the southern birdwing female shooting the X in the air. So this is the first ever recorded behavior uh, uh, where the female shoots her egg in the air. Uh, normally, the females of the southern birdwing they lay their eggs away from the coast to escape threats from the parasitic wasps, which which usually search uh, on the coast to lay their eggs on the coast and the eggs of the butterflies. But the female uses the technique of laying the X away from the coast. And this southern birding female is actually shooting the X in the air. Uh, we also got to know about this behavior when we just, uh, you know, editing the videos what we had recorded earlier. So it was, uh, we just saw the X moving in the air. So that was really uh, fantastic. Uh, here's a parasitic wasp. Uh, which is uh, you know laying eggs on the egg of the southern birding. I told you normally the females lay eggs away from the coast, but in some cases it doesn't work for the female even if it lays at the eggs of uh, eggs away from the coast. This is one more interesting uh, behavior what we have observed uh, during the shoot, where the caterpillars of you know just before going to pupate uh, the southern birding caterpillar, it cuts the coast from the base, and it cuts. And, be, and it cuts and then pupates, okay? Uh, uh, it is actually told that normally they cut to reduce the toxicity of the plant. Uh, Aristolochia indica contrast of aristologic acids in it, which makes the, uh, you know, um, makes the uh, caterpillars and butterflies toxic and unpalatable to birds. But uh, interestingly, this uh, individual cut the host from the base. It was a uh, quite a long, uh, big uh, climber. With a lot of leaves, and this caterpillar cut the ho cut the host plant from the base, and just went and pupated later. So this is to avoid competition. Uh, this is one more moment, or I can remember where the weaver ant saw this caterpillar, which was just about to uh, pupate, which was just uh, uh, sitting there, and uh, which has not yet started to view the silk thread. Uh, the weaver ant visits them, and unfortunately, they leave the caterpillar like that. They don't attack it. So this is the top dorsal area when the caterpillar is pupating. Uh, here's one more moment uh, what I can remember from uh, during the shoot. So this is the southern birding which, is, which had closed out an hour back and there were jungle babblers which were actually in search of their breakfast. And this butterfly uh, had to uh, take, uh, had to, uh, you know, had to go, go for an emergency takeoff and it started uh, putting out the meconium fluid continuously from its abdomen. But uh, the butterfly wasn't able to fly, it fell to the ground, uh, but that was enough for it to be to escape from the jungle barbless. So here you can see the empty chrysalis uh, with the meconium fluid. And you can also see the one of the jungle barbless sitting and watching the, uh, you know, actually seeing the chrysalis, okay? The empty exoskeleton, I can say. This is one more wonderful moment I can remember during the shoot. Uh, the butterfly excreting the meconium fluid. It was, this uh, fluid, you know, was about to fall on the camera lens. Uh, it was just a miss actually. And, uh, this is a blue tiger, dark blue tiger, uh, which was the female, which was actually sipping the uh, alkaloid from the excreta of the, uh, from the droppings of the caterpillar, moth caterpillars on the alkaloid rich plants. Um, here is one more moment, which I cannot just forget, the fight between the blue nawab and the weaver ant. The weaver ant actually caught the proboscis of the butterfly and uh, normally the other butterflies would have flee away, but this here you can see it kicked the ant and it defended itself so well. The ant ran away from there and the butterfly continues sipping liquid uh, from the rotten, rotten fruit. Uh, one more uh, moment is that here the red spot duke female showing her dominance on the male. Uh, you can see the red spot duke female here. Uh, and this male, which, had, which was near the feeding ground of the female, uh, so it uh, it was just hit by the female, okay, and the male just flew away, uh, refraining itself from a counterattack. So females of the red spot dukes actually uh, are, uh, you know, actually showed that very uh, the pre pretty dominant.
uh, here is one more uh, interesting thing uh, the uh, that we i could sh i was shooting this uh, tony raja uh, for 2 3 days i was observing this uh, continuously and one of the days uh, what i saw was the wing both the hind wings of the tony raja female cut in the shape of the beak of the bird or mostly it might be a green wing snake also which might have attacked this butterfly and provided we don't know it has escaped the threat so tony raja is a strong butterfly they don't give up so easily here is one more interesting thing uh, what i saw was this yam fly was actually sipping sap from uh, from its host uh, plant also uh, you can see the proboscis is touching the uh, sap there and uh, it was around uh, you know 8:39 uh, i think so this is this is actually interesting to see okay uh, here is the habitat of the autumn leaf on sudoranthamum Uh, Malaba, the Cedarantham Malabari plants. Uh, we have more than five five thousand hosts for this butterfly, and you can see the autumn leaves coming to breed uh, every year. Uh, here is the attack on the Tamil lacewing caterpillars by Dicama ant. It's a solitary ant. You can see how it attacks there. So this was one more video. I just remember. Uh, this is uh, the common mime caterpillar with its osmotorium exerted. This was. a uh, pretty interesting to note that this caterpillar was actually responding to the sound uh, when we when we used to talk or shout this caterpillar is to just put its osmotorium out so that's that was pretty interesting to note again uh, this is one more moment what i remember uh, during the shoot the caterpillar which come uh, the three spot gracilis caterpillar comes down because uh, there is shortage of food on the coast it uh, it's uh, chooses the alternate plant that is it feed, starts feeding on mimosa podica that touch me not and you can see immediately there's a diacoma and uh, attacking it and it takes the caterpillar away uh, this is the malabar bandit solitary laying eggs on citrus medica uh, this one more shoot here the praying mantis very patiently sitting near the flower waiting for the butterfly to come and it attacks the tail chip this is a crab spider i spent almost like 3 to 4 hours shooting this crab spider attacking the grape ants here one more interesting thing was uh, caterpillar uh, being protected by the uh, weevils this caterpillar is of the western centaur group lycinidae family butterflies are known to have a symbiotic relationship with the ants and you can see uh, this uh, weaver ant taking the honeydew secretion from the caterpillar as a protection feed uh, this was uh, surprising actually the caterpillar of the common ciliate blue by uh, was attacked so i was actually shooting this for quite a long time it was uh, around uh, uh seven in the evening and suddenly one of the caterpillars started uh, biting the so one of the ants started biting the caterpillar uh, in a quite an aggressive way in a attacking way and uh, one more joined it and they actually almost killed the caterpillar so normally the ants are known to protect the caterpillars of the lycinidae butterflies uh, this was surprising for me for the first time uh, it seen such a behavior where and they actually have a, the ants actually kill the caterpillars so these are some of the shots then the click so we finished with this uh, presentation here uh, this is a trust which we are working under now though the conservation work or the uh, you know what the work of creating awareness among the general public mostly started in 2011 uh, uh, the trust was regi registered uh, just a couple of years back so with this uh, we finish up the presentation Uh, i really thank for the opportunity given uh, to all the uh, entire team of the butterfly festival karnataka butterfly festival 2020 and also the karnataka forest department for this opportunity thank you if there are questions i can just answer thank you samilian for the wonderful talk uh, i have a question actually uh, do you get uh, do you actually suggest people what kind of uh, host plant should be planted uh, see uh, more than more than uh, planting the host plants i would actually suggest you to conserve the native flora which is already existing in the area that's very important uh, then uh, if you want to propagate plants then you have to concentrate on the native flora Uh, some of the common uh, plant what you can plant uh, you know could be a lime plant or the curry leaf plant or uh, uh, the cinnamon 
uh, which can, which is host for the common mime and the common blue bottle you can also plant uh, uh, you know uh, mango tree if you have a big area you will of course see the barons coming there and uh, if you are uh, in the in the western ghats belt you will see common imperial state flash uh, monkey puzzle breeding on mango and then um, you can uh, if you are again in this belt you can put xanthuselum red star uh, in kannada we call it is gamatemara it's host plant for the iconic malabar banded peacock uh, the uh, common mormon and the red helen you can like that put many other host plants uh, which can actually uh, help the butterfly population sustain in the area apart from that you can put nectar plants like ixora that is capula in uh, kannada you can also uh, put uh, uh stachyter peta uh, and uh, also the red hibiscus and you can put soap nuts soap nuts can attract a lot of butterflies uh, if you are in the uh, if you are near the western ghats or uh, anywhere near to the western ghats maybe in the foothills or above the ghats also you can put uh, acronychia pedunculata one of the uh, best net uh, attractant for butterflies uh, it is also host for the malabar banded solotail it is host for uh, uh other uh, you know solitary butterflies also so this is how you can uh, create a butterfly habitat with all the native flora but uh, uh, but uh, it's very important that you conserve the natural habitat which is already existing so when you create a habitat you should be very careful that you uh, retain the plants which are already found in the area so it's not that uh, you know uh, removing all the herbs and shrubs Uh, which is uh, actually important and putting bigger plants it's not like that so you have to conserve all those herbs and shrubs which are which are been, which are existing from uh, many years so you have to conserve them yeah hello yeah definitely uh, we have one more question from rama varyur uh, he says uh, what were the some of the hurdles that you had to overcome to build butterfly park and your conservation efforts so uh, so it is actually uh, uh, you know one thing is uh, the uh, financially uh, you need uh, a support to come up with uh, such a work and that's very important uh, that's one of the hurdles i faced uh, then uh, making uh, a butterfly habitat is really an interesting thing because if you are passionate about it you are really enjoying <laughs> doing that uh, except for uh, the money uh, matter uh, or else you are actually enjoying what you are doing uh, and uh, uh, if you are interested uh, you don't feel anything like that it is a hurdle for you right so this is how it goes we have one more question uh, from pavan kulkarni okay is it possible to document butterflies in semi arid regions of hk region we don't have uh, white plants in our region to, when compared to uh, western ghats no uh, it's not that uh, you don't have plants in uh, the semi arid region there are butterflies which are restricted to the semi arid region uh with the with the diversity okay maybe there is a difference in the diversity of the semi arid region or that down in the foothills or in the ghats but there are there is wonderful diversity a lot a uh, lot of opportunities actually uh, you know come up in the semi arid regions uh, uh, where very less documentation has been done so you have a lot of opportunities it's not like that you don't have butterflies in the semi arid regions it has got its own species in the area uh, we have question from namrata Okay. other uh, plant other planting host plants did you take any other efforts to attract butterflies to the park uh so planting host and nectar plants was was the main job we did um uh so there are no much efforts other than that what i feel so if you have uh, a land you can just conserve the plants which is naturally found as i told you earlier and uh, putting more native propagating more native plants so some of the plants of course uh, we have introduced which we have got it from outside which actually uh, doesn't belong to the uh, area so mostly like uh, tortilla silicosa that is which is endemic to uh, this uh, western ghats belt uh, which is host for the malabar rose and all so that all have been introduced some of the plants have been introduced we got saplings we collected seeds Uh, some naturally exist in the foothills you know but the butterflies uh, uh, conserving the 
secondary forest uh, in the foothills of the western ghats is very much important because uh, uh, they are as much important as the core ghats because the butterflies to escape harsh weather during the southwest monsoon they, uh, most of the species come down to the you know the coastal line of the ghats where there is no continuous rain like the ghats uh, comparatively lesser rainfall where they can which is where, when it is humid and they can thrive actually in this part so this has been happening from many years and you are disturbing the entire cycle by removing the secondary forest in the foothills so if you just conserve the secondary forest in the foothills that's going to uh, uh, going to uh, you know going to help butterfly sustain in the area okay uh, there's one more question from uh, facebook okay they're asking how many people on average visit the park throughout the year so it's on an average so this year uh, due to covid-19 we didn't have much visitors but normally it is up to about uh, at least about 20 to 25 which participate to the private school and maybe about to 15 government schools so uh, we still have uh, free entry for the government schools uh, and also uh, concession for the aided schools so, and uh, on an average uh, taking the general public uh, on an average weekly during the season that is from june to november weekly you might see about 100 to 150 visitors during the season. That, that's really nice. Uh, uh, Pranit Shetty wants to ask uh, why only few states have their state butterfly? Uh, maybe uh, other states will also come up with uh, the state butterfly. So right now, yeah. there, there are people enthusiast uh, in these particular states which uh, actually wanted a state butterfly to make butterflies more popular among the general public. Um, then the other states might also come up with the state butterflies. Even uh, the national butterflies, uh, uh, you know, can is in progress after voting from the general public. So likewise, other states also might come up with the state butterfly soon. Uh, Priya wants to ask, uh, where can we see butterfly documentary? Uh, Okay, uh, so the butterfly documentary, uh, actually, uh, right now we haven't, uh, uh, you know, put it on YouTube or any of the online uh, networks, but uh, you can uh, purchase a copy directly from us. Uh, uh, the trailer is online. If you Google search Life of Butterflies official trailer, you'll get to see the trailer of the movie. Uh, but for the purchasing a copy of the documentary, you will have to uh, directly contact either me or you can also mail to ssbutterflypark at gmail.com. If you want to screen it in uh, any of the educational institutions, also we give, uh, uh, once you purchase, we, you can play it num any number of times, in any number of institutions if you wish to, but uh, yeah, putting a mail uh, prior to that. So uh, we have also given this documentary to many people who have been playing it in various other educational institutions. So it would be free of cost. Once it is purchased, they can play it in many number of times in the educational institution for free of cost. Thank you, Samilian, for a wonderful talk. Uh, before we leave, uh, could you please share your uh, email address in the chat box? Yeah, one minute. I hope you got it. Yeah, we received it. There's one more last question. Yeah. Uh, how is uh, government and forest department? Jean mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Can you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I have been able to hear. Yeah. How is government and forest department helping to take the initiative to save? Money the pants up. Hello. Uh, okay. okay. Hello. Yeah. How is the government and forest department helping to take the initiative to save butterfly and encourage butterfly habitats to take shape in urban areas like parks and green spaces? Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, 
uh, they're actually interested uh, uh, in the butterfly host in nectar plants, you can say. Uh, many of the, uh, I've been approached by many of the forest officials, uh, whether it is Saluma or the Timaka, what they're creating recently in some of the places. Uh, so uh, they have been interested to put uh, uh, plants and trees related to butterfly which are native to the area and uh, I've been contacted for this. Also as far as the, hello, as far as the, uh, our, my, our work is concerned here, uh, we have been getting wonderful support from the forest department and uh, we've been provided with the native flora uh, which we propagate we also encourage people who come to the butterfly park to propagate such uh, trees and plants in their locations and we are uh, doing it uh, mostly uh, in the near future also uh, we are hoping for a wonderful support from the forest department on this work that's really nice uh, thank you samilian uh, maybe one of the days we would like to visit your uh, park yeah. Yes, so thank you again, Samilin, for that interesting uh, story, your interesting butterfly stories that were accompanied by your amazing photographs and videos. Thank you, thank you for sharing them with us. Thank you. And I'm sure that uh, those who have seen your film before have enjoyed seeing the beautiful parts of the footage again today with your explanations of the scenes. Sure, sure. And for those who haven't yet seen the film, I'm sure they're now waiting to see it completely. And surely you have inspired quite a few of us to do our own part to save butterflies and save life. Thank you so much, Samilan, for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you.